So before you actually start the test, I want you to take a few minutes and use some scratch paper. If you're taking the test in a testing center, you'll be given a piece of scratch paper or a dry erase board. If you're taking the test online, you can ask the proctor if you can use a test uh, a scratch paper to help you take the test. Communicate with your proctor and ask if that's okay. Show them the paper on your webcam to make sure you know there's nothing hidden on there or no notes and they should allow you to use that test, uh, that scratch paper. Now, take the first 30 seconds writing out after you've cleared this with your proctor online or after you've been given the scratch paper in their test center, write out your uh, brain dump, okay? Now, these are things that you maybe have trouble remembering. A lot of people pick the port and protocol numbers. You can write out the different port and protocol numbers in a line and use that as a reference guide. What this is going to do is first it's going to get you familiarized with the, the format and the environment of the exam. So if you're at a testing center, you're going to sit down at your computer, you're going to have your, your scratch paper. As you write that down, you should become comfortable with your seat, with your computer, with the environment, how it sounds, uh, what, you know, what, what are the sounds of the environment? How, how are other people moving around? Is somebody you know, tapping on their test or or stomping their foot nervously about the test. Uh, is there an air conditioning running? You know, is there, are there any little, you know, are people clacking away at the keyboard? What's going on? Get familiar with those sounds, okay? Now you're gonna write your brain dump. Port protocol numbers are a good one. OSI model is another one sometimes people write down. Uh, anything that you think would help you, NMAP commands or syntax NMAP commands, now these may be things that you already have in your mind, or they may be things that you are committing to memorization. Different certificate types are, are good examples. You might do like P7B and the different types of certificates. It's also, the purpose of this is also to get you comfortable. Once you've written down that information, you have that as a reference guide. So you're never gonna have to go across a question and think to yourself, okay, what are my port and protocol numbers? Ah, oh, what's the NS? Is that 55 or is that 53? And you're not going to be unsure of that. You can just look at your reference number. Ah, look, port protocol number. I have that on my reference sheet. Look at my reference sheet. That's the answer to that question. It gives you a lot of confidence when you have something that you've already prepared for come up on the test. Now, as you go through the questions, you're going to have the opportunity to flag the question. If you don't know the question within the first 30 seconds, if you can't confidently answer it, make a guess, select something, and then flag the question and then move on. Try and answer 30 seconds to a minute for each question, okay? You wanna get at that pace. Now, if you've taken the practice quizzes uh, with on the Cybercraft site, all of our practice quizzes, our practice exams are paced at that one minute per question mark to help you get familiar with that. So you wanna take your best guess within 30 seconds. You always wanna make a selection before you answer the question. You don't, or before you skip the question, you don't want to just leave a question blank. So make your best guess. Oftentimes your instincts will be correct. Make a guess, flag the question, go on if you're unsure of it, okay? If you're sure of the question, leave it unflagged. Next, you're gonna find performance-based questions, okay? These performance-based questions can be very involved. I want you to take about 10 seconds for each performance-based question and evaluate it. Is this a performance-based question that I can answer quickly? If you can't answer it quickly or easily, if you don't think you can do that, then flag the question, don't try and answer it, and then move on. Save it for the end. If you think you can handle it right there, so say it's you know, configuring a firewall and you're comfortable with firewalls, then go ahead and answer it right on the spot. Now, once you reach the end of the test, you want to answer those performance-based questions that you skipped earlier. And this is where this method allows you to ensure that you've answered all the multiple choice questions, the easy, the low hanging fruit questions. You've answered those first before you get to these performance based questions that are gonna give, they're gonna take a long time. You don't wanna be in a situation where you're spending a lot of time with a performance based question, and then you look at the timer and you only have 15 minutes left of the exam and you have 40 multiple choice questions left to answer. That's a bad spot to be in. So you always wanna answer all your multiple choice questions first before you tackle those performance based questions that are giving you a little bit of trouble. So answer those at the end of your first pass through the test. Now, once you've gone through the test once, it's very important to go through the test again. I invite you to go through the test three times, okay? 
So you go through the test once, you answer all the multiple choice questions, you answer or flag all the performance-based questions, and then you answer those PBQs at the end. After that, you go through all the questions next. You want to verify that you made a selection for each one. So if you reach a question you, you have not flagged, that means you were confident about. Just verify that you made a question, uh, selection. Maybe quickly skim through the, the question and the answer to make sure that makes sense and keep going. Sometimes you may find that you selected, you accidentally clicked an answer that you didn't mean to select and you didn't need to change it. When you get to the questions that you flagged, now you can spend a little more time on them, reread the question, and once you've gone through the test once, you should be in a better mental spot to answer those harder questions. You might have gained some information about uh, you know, some other questions or gotten a little more comfortable about these questions, and now you can answer those questions a little easier. So now you want to make sure you read those questions. Make sure you read all of the answers before you make a selection. You never want to read an answer and stop at the correct answer. Because there could be questions, there are a lot of questions where you either have to select multiple choices or you have to select the best choice. And there'll be two answers that are both correct, but one will be a little more correct than the other. So definitely make sure you uh, stop and you read all of those answers beforehand. Now, once you've gone through your second review, you could spend some more time on those performance-based questions if you were unsure of any. Uh, if you go through a question on your second review and you're still not sure of it, leave it flagged. Then at the end, you should have time for your third review and ideally you only have like less than 10 questions that you're still unsure of at this point that you've left flagged and you can go right to those questions using the course navigation and find those. Now remember, you have an acronym sheet available to you. Uh, there should be one within your testing uh, uh, software, usually in the help menu. You can have help and then acronym list. That can help a lot of people. You know, some people have trouble with their acronyms, so you have that list available to you. Make sure you find that before you begin your test. If you still don't know the answer to the third pass, that's okay. Spend the rest of your time available on the quiz or on the test uh, looking at those questions. You always want to make sure to use all of your time, even if you're very confident about your results, because you there is always the possibility that you've just misselected different uh, different um, answers. So you definitely want to take all the time for the test. You know, I personally, I've passed every single certification exam I've taken on the first attempt, but on every single one, I have used all of the time available to me, every single time, even for the ones I was completely confident I passed. And I just, I did this method right here. I looked through every answer. I'd flag the ones I was unsure of. I'd go back and I would make sure to check every single answer. And I've done this uh, every single time, and I've had success first time on every single certification. So definitely make sure you take this method works. It's definitely working. And a lot of my students have a great deal of success with this method, most of them. Some people have their little different methods, but I definitely recommend this one. So let's summarize everything. All right, first you're going to start with that brain dump. You're going to write down your, your notes, okay? Then you're going to go through your first pass. You're going to take about 30 seconds, upwards to a minute, to answer these questions. Your flag questions you don't know, but you're going to make a selection for every one. Then you're going to make an assessment for each PBQ. 10 seconds on the assessment. Can I answer this right away, or do I need to save it? If you need to save it, flag it, save it to the end. And we have our second pass. You're going to review every question. Make sure you made a selection and it's the right one. Uh, you're going to address all the flag questions, spend a little more time on them. Uh, and then on the third pass, you're going to answer any remaining flag questions. You're going to go back and you take some time on them. If you're still unsure of a question after that second pass, go with your first instinct. Go with what you selected first and don't think about it too hard. Okay, remember most of these quizzes, you're going to need about an 80% to pass on, or most of these tests, you need 80% to pass most of these CompTIA certifications. A lot of them are like a 750 at a 900. So you're going to need that. A good passing score, you don't need to answer everything correctly. And sometimes there's questions in there that are test questions or that are experimental questions that they're testing out to possibly include in future iterations of the exam. So if you see something that might not make sense to you, maybe that's one of those experimental questions. Don't stress too hard on a couple questions. Okay. Now let's talk about some study techniques leading up to the exam. First, I want to talk about memory association. 
This is a process of retaining information by using some of our senses within our body to associate different memories or different subjects with a certain action. So one of these would be, so if you're studying for your, maybe your security plus, you could listen to the same type of music as you study. And then every time you study, listen to that same music. That could be like the same band or maybe the same genre of music. Yeah, so there's oftentimes when I'm listening or I'm studying, I'll listen to the same band or same album on repeat. Then leading up to test day, I'll play that same album on my way to the testing center or in the hours before the test. And I'll help recall that information passively. It'll help my brain associate it. You could also eat the same foods, maybe drink the same beverages, have the same snacks or drinks. You could chew gum. Now, studies show that scent, the sense of smell, is the strongest when it comes to memory association. So you can either light a candle, uh, if you could wear a certain type of scent, like a certain cologne or deodorant. Uh, you can light incense, if you have incense, something like that. Something that has a certain smell, and usually smell is easiest uh, to associate. Now, if you're taking the test at home, this could be a really good one to do because you can light that same candle in that room or that same incense or whatever. And then while you're taking the test, you have that running, you have that lit. That can help you uh, recall all of this information. Try these tricks out, see if they work for you. Some people respond a little better than others to these tricks. Uh, some people can trick their brain pretty easily into recalling information. Some people, these don't really do anything for. So it's really up to the individual, but they do work for most people. Now, this is Bloom's taxonomy. This is a theoretical concept for how to gain different levels of understanding. Okay. When you first start learning a concept, you start off at the remember tier. This is where you're recalling facts and basic concepts. This is concepts here. Then as you increase your understanding, you're going to be able to explain those ideas. You're going to be able to describe them or have a discussion about them to recognize them if you see them. And then you're going to have to apply those information to gain a higher level of understanding. So you're going to have to use the information in new types of um, circumstances. Now the questions you're going to receive on your CompTIA exam are going to test your level of understanding in the apply and understand tiers of information. So this is in the performance-based questions, you're most likely going to have to apply that information in a new creative way. Okay, So you need to really, you can't just understand each term. You can't just remember, remember every term. Okay, You have to remember those terms and then understand how they fit together. So you have to think about this as you're going through your studying. Are you able to teach somebody else these concepts? If you are, then you're up at that level of apply, that apply tier. And that's going to mean that you're very much ready for the exam. Okay? These top tiers, these are more for, these are higher levels of understanding. You know, create is when you know so much about the, the topic that you are able to write a book or, or teach other people um, by creating your own course curriculum, for example. So that's, that's much more advanced. You're going to need to understand this at the apply and understand level. Just something to keep in mind. A lot of people don't know about Bloom's taxonomy, but it's a good way to think about how we evolve our understanding of concepts through learning. Also, I explain the concept of visualization. Now, this technique can be used to help mentally prepare yourself for an exam, and tests can be very stressful for a lot of people. So with visualization, what you want to do is you want to stop, start by closing your eyes. You want to take a few deep breaths, okay? And we can do this, we can do this uh, right now if, if you like. So go ahead, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. Imagine yourself sitting at the computer where you're going to take your test. Now, are you going to be driving to the test center or are you going to be taking it home? Depending on your answer, imagine traveling, walking to that location. So if you're at home, walking to that chair where you're going to sit down to take your test, what do you have with you? How are you feeling at that moment? Are you nervous about the test? You know, if you're at the testing center, walking into the, the room with the computers, sitting down at the computer, who else is in there? What does it sound like? 
is it air conditioned in there? How does it feel? Are there any smells? Did you, if you're at home, did you light a candle uh, or incense or something? What are you thinking as you, as you start the test? Okay, so you want to imagine those things, sight, smell, sounds, you know, do you hear the sound of air conditioning? Do you hear the sound of other people typing a computer? Uh, do you, is it quiet? Are you in a room that you're familiar with? Now, think about how you prepare. Think about taking out your scrap paper, writing down your brain dump, writing down things that will help you, prompt you to answer these questions on the exam. Now you're presented with the first question, okay? What do you feel as you're presented with the first question? You want to think about um, how that makes you feel, your response to that, and how you want to go ahead, go forward. Is there anything you want to tell yourself as you answer a question? Okay, is this an easy question? Maybe you tell yourself, okay, good job. Nice job. Keep moving. Keep going with the questions. Good job. Answer that question. Concur words of encouragement. What if you come across a, a question that you don't really know or you, you're having trouble with? Maybe the first three questions are something that you have to flag. Relax. Calm down. Drive through. Follow your test-taking method. Flag the question if you're not sure, make a best selection and move on, okay? Imagine answering a question that you think you got correct, okay? Think about, you know, how that feels. Does that make you feel good, feel confident about the question? Uh, follow your test-taking methodology. Focus on each question one at a time. Try not to think about the test as a whole. Just focus on the questions before you. Now, you come across a performance-based question. Take a few seconds. Look at the question. Can I answer this question quickly? If you can, go ahead, start answering the question, make your best selections. Maybe you answer it and you're still not sure of a few things. That's fine. Flag it. Make all of the selections and then move on. If you don't think you're going to be able to answer that correctly right away, go ahead and flag it, skip it, and move on through the test. Save it towards the end. Now you get to the end of the first pass of the test. You've answered all of your multiple choice questions. Go back to the performance-based questions that you skipped and answer those. Once you've done that, you've answered all the questions, then go through your second pass of the test. Make sure you've answered every question. Read the questions very quickly. Make sure you've made a selection. Select the best answer. Keep going. If you still are not sure, leave the question flagged. Go through that entire second pass. If you still have more time, begin that third pass. Then focus just on the flagged questions. Then imagine submitting your test, how that feels, and you're done with your visualization. Doing this sort of mental prep, this visualization exercise, can be very helpful to quell that nervousness that you might get before tests. Some people get very nervous when they take tests. So thinking about and walking through all the steps in your brain, walking through all of those steps can be very helpful. I highly recommend you try this method out before you take a test and I think you'll find a lot of success. My students have found great deal of success, even those who are very nervous test takers, trying this Cybercraft test taking methodology. Try it out for yourself. I think you're gonna have some wonderful success. And remember, if you need any help, reach out to us, info at cybercrafttraining.com, where you can uh, reach out to directly through the chat program. Thanks so much. Good luck scheduling your tests. Good luck on your tests. Let me know how it goes either way and have a wonderful day.